tonight, Trump again slamming the House Oversight Committee Chairman Elijah Cummings, tweeting, quote, Baltimore, under the leadership of Elijah Cummings, has the worst crime statistics in the nation. 25 years of all talk, no action. So tired of listening to the same old bull. Trump's tweets continuing a three-day attack on Maryland Congressman Elijah Cummings. Trump attacking uh, the powerful head of the House Oversight Committee. Cummings oversees currently no fewer than 12 investigations into the president and his family and his business. And Trump picked a line of attack to feed his bases, basest tendencies, referring to Cummings' district, overwhelmingly African-American, as, quote, disgusting rat and rodent infested places no human would want to live. And don't take my comment about Trump's base as a, a guess. The Washington Post reports that Trump's advisors concluded that attacks like these are, quote, good for the president among his political base, resonating strongly with the white working class voters he needs to win re-election in 2020. They said it. They think slamming minorities, the black congressmen, will resonate with Trump's white voters. That is a deeply ugly admission. And infest is a word the president often uses when it comes to black and brown people. Just the other day, telling four minority American congresswomen to go back to the crime-infested countries they came from. Infest has become sort of a trope for Trump. Here's a couple of his past tweets. This one, Democrats don't care about crime and want illegal immigrants, no matter how bad they may be, to pour into and infest our country. And of civil rights icon John Lewis, Congressman Lewis should finally focus on the burning and crime-infested inner cities of the United States. Infest is a loaded word throughout history. And when people defending Trump say, well, literally there are rats in Baltimore, that shows a painful willingness to look the other way. Abby Phillip is out front at the White House for us tonight. And Abby, uh, the president's advisors clearly see this as a re-election strategy, and they see it as something that will resonate with uh, their words, his white working class voters. That's right, Aaron. And in some ways, they have no choice because this is a strategy that President Trump himself has set out on. When President Trump first attacked the squad, his campaign reframed it as, a, an, a, as an attack that was really about patriotism and nativism. And now here, as you're seeing President Trump attacking Elijah Cummings, his advisors are coming to his aid. We saw him also expanding his attack to people like Al Sharpton, telling his supporters via Twitter that Sharpton hates whites and hates cops. Uh, President Trump linked these two things together, linked the Cummings attacks and the squad's attacks together in a tweet this weekend. He said, if the Democrats are going to defend the radical left squad and King Elijah's Baltimore fail, it will be a long road to 2020. So President Trump is making it plain that this is his path to re-election. Uh, but the question is, uh, can they reframe the Cummings attack as some kind of nativist, nativist attack that's really about patriotism? That, I think, remains to be seen, Aaron. All right, Abby, thank you very much. And out front now, Democratic Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence of Michigan, member of the House Oversight Committee, which, of course, is chaired by Congressman Cummings, uh, as I said. And, of course, uh, I'm here with you in, yes. in person uh, in, in your state. All right, so you heard the, re the reporting, which, which I thought was, was quite profound because mm -hmm. it was Team Trump saying that they think that things like this resonate with Trump's white voter base. They said that. They put the word white in there. Mm -hmm. Does it surprise you that they will admit that this racially charged talk they think is effective? You know, if you look through history and, and times of Jim Crow, times when we were struggling with civil rights movement, there was always this effort to separate white America and black America. It's always been this effort to dehumanize black people. So when you call them infested and you give them titles, they're not as equal. They're not as You say as good. a place no human would want to live. Exactly. So therefore, if you're living there, you're not human. So I, I just really don't want America, especially black America, to be sucked into this rabbit hole because this is a deliberate attempt by this president to get us distracted, to start looking at our white neighbor and saying, wait a minute, are you one of those people who think that way about us? In America, we have history, lesson after lesson, where people mm -hmm. come together. And this president is really trying to divide this country and suppress the vote. Because if he gets black people to say, oh, this country doesn't care about me, it's, it's no good. Then they don't vote. And they don't vote. All right. 
So the latest FBI data, so the president is saying, right, that this is this is actually, let's look at the facts. Yeah. Okay. The latest FBI data shows Baltimore had more homicides than any large American city in 2017. Mm-hmm. Look, Baltimore has a lot of crime problems, right? Mm-hmm. We, we know that. That, that, mm-hmm. that. that is a fact. In one of his tweets, Trump writes, quote, there is nothing racist with saying plainly what most people already know. Dems always play the race card when they're unable to win with the facts. Shame. Your response. The president again. He is the president of the United States of America. Baltimore is a part of the United States of America. If he was a true leader, his comment would be, what can we do to fix this? Even if he felt that Elijah Cumming was not a good leader, where, what do you offer, sir? As the president of the United States, what have you offered to bring this country together? What have you offered to reduce crime? What have you done to to enrich this country. Everything is about dividing, Every, the tax cuts. But then you don't want to raise the minimum wage to $15 so that all ships can rise and everyone could take part of the American dream. So I'm trying, you know, you were at Michael Cohen's hearing back in February yes, I was. as part of the committee. And there was a moment there that I thought was, was I don't know, it was something poignant about this moment. Cummings defended Republican Congressman Mark Meadows, who of yes. course is a big Trump supporter. Mm-hmm. Meadows was essentially called racist. Um, because he brought one African-American woman out and said, look, mm-hmm. here she is. This proves Michael Cohen's wrong. President Trump isn't a racist. Which was ignorant. So it was ignorant. Yes. Yet Cummings, the committee chairman, jumped in to defend Mark Meadows, mm-hmm. his friend. And I just wanted to play that moment. Mm-hmm. You're one of my best friends. I know that shocks a lot of people. And, and likewise, Mr. Yeah, chairman. But you are. And I would do, and I could see and feel your pain. I feel it. I have not forgotten that moment yes. because I thought that was a moment where you could say someone, Elijah Cummings, who's leading these investigations, Mark Meadows, who is completely on the other side and pro-Trump, that they can say they're one of the best friends and defend mm-hmm. and, and Cummings defended Meadows. The president of the United States um, isn't just slamming Cummings. He called him a racist, yes. you know, basically saying, well, because your district isn't doing better, you're the racist, Elijah Cummings. Does Mr. Meadows need to speak out publicly for his friend? Mr. Meadows has a lot of demons he has to address because I know Meadows as well. I've known him to be in the right place on so many issues and to be silent and to try to support this president as so many other Republicans are doing. It is shameful and it's, it, there has to be accountability for this because right is right, wrong is wrong. You know what the gauge is? Would you tell your children I want you to be just like the president of the United States. I want you as my child to grow up and call people names, make racist comments. You know, the president of the United States is a role model. How many Republicans can say that? 